Hey guys, Humphrey here. So last week, it was reported that Congress member Nancy Pelosi's husband bought more stocks by buying call options on many tech holdings, including Google, Roblox, and Disney. This shows me that basically the Pelosi's believe that large tech stocks are positioned for gains in 2022. So that definitely makes you wonder whether or not they know something that the broader market doesn't. Now, to be completely clear, Nancy Pelosi doesn't actually trade the stocks. Her husband does, but that doesn't really matter because Congress members and their spouses or children must report their transactions according to the Stock Act of 2012. Now, critics have argued that members of Congress should be banned from trading stocks due to the information Congress may have access to, but for now, the act of trading is not illegal, and all that's required is that you actually need to disclose it. So after reading the report last week, that got me wondering, well, how does Congress perform when it comes to trading stocks, and where can I find what they're trading? And the reason is simple, because if their historical performance is superior to that of the benchmark of the S&P 500, perhaps we can just get some inspiration from their trades and use this information to our advantage. Now, I did find one caveat though. The disclosed trades are required to be published within 45 days, which means that even if we do get access to a congressional trade, it could be too late because the price action on that particular stock could have moved significantly in the delay of the trade time till the time of disclosure. Now, in my research, I found that as of 2021, in the approximately nine month period up to September, 2021, Senate and House members disclosed 4,000 trades worth at least 350 15 million dollars of stocks and bonds. Now, if you are looking to see what a Senate or House member typically trades, you can go to popular websites like senatestockwatcher.com or housestockwatcher.com. Now, once you're on housestockwatcher.com, what you can do is you can actually search by representative. So I'm just gonna click search by rep and then type in Pelosi right here. And then we can actually view her summary. We can see her exact breakdown of all trades she's done, including the sectors and industry she most trades in, as well as the volume of transactions that she's made over $54 million. Now, if we scroll down a little bit further on this dashboard right here, we can actually see all of her trade details. As you can see, the dates are a little bit jumbled here, but we can actually see what she's bought and sold in the past. Now, if we go all the way down here, we actually do find her recent trades, including the purchase of Google right here, and also the purchase of Disney, which she made in December 17th, 2021. Now, when it came to Nancy Pelosi in particular, we can figure out how well she actually does in relation to the market. I found an article online that used the median value of the assets that she purchased and calculated her returns based on the adjusted closing date of September 27th, 2021. They found that on average for the past three years, Nancy Pelosi beat the stock market quite handily. In 2019, the S&P returned 28.9% and she returned 33.6% beating the S&P by a differential of 4.7%. In 2020, the S&P returned 16.3% and her returns were 29.5%, beating the S&P by 13.2%. And in 2021, up to quarter three, the S&P returned 14.5% and she was beating it slightly at 16.6%. Now that's pretty amazing if you consider the following report from Bloomberg about how hedge funds did in the year of 2021, which came out last week. They found that only three hedge funds ended up beating the S&P 500 in the full count calendar year of 2021. Senvest, the hedge fund who has $3.3 billion under management, the number one on this list, only returned a large percentage due to a big bet on GameStop earlier in the year. So therefore, Pelosi probably did better than most hedge funds did in 2021. Also, a lot of Pelosi's trades have come under scrutiny, especially when you couple them with the timing of certain legislative or financial news. For example, back in July, Nancy's husband actually made $5.3 million by exercising call options that let him buy 4000 thousand shares of Google. That was coincidentally one week before the House Judiciary Committee moved forward with antitrust bills taking aim at Google, Amazon, and Facebook. The market reaction on those regulations were rather muted, suggesting that investors did not view the House legislation as a real threat to the companies, and therefore Google's share price actually surged 3.2% shortly after that hearing. This particular trade really sparked a lot of controversy online, even deeming Nancy the queen of Wall Street, and this tweet in particular was rather funny from an account that tracked Nancy these trades, that her annualized returns were better than that of Warren Buffett, George Soros, Peter Lynch, and the Medallion Fund. So we've basically kind of figured out that Nancy Pelosi generally does pretty well in the stock market, or at least her husband does. So let's actually look at what she bought last week and talk about those purchases. So if we look on the periodic transaction report that they actually have to file, he purchased Google 10 call options with a strike price of $2,000 and an expiration date of 9-16-2022. This today would run you about $939,000 just to buy these call options. That's pretty crazy. He also bought about 100 call options on Micron technology with a strike price of 
$50 and the same expiration date of September 16, 2022. This probably means that Paul Pelosi is most likely expecting that these are going to be good investments up until that date. Furthermore, he also bought into Roblox, as you can see right here, 100 call options at a strike price of $100 that roughly cost him between 250 and 500K. He also made two trades of Salesforce, both are call options, and they actually expire in January of 2023. So these are a little bit longer out. You may also notice that he buys deep in the money calls, which means that the stock prices currently are trading at much higher levels than their option to exercise price. For example, Google trades for $2,900 a share as of right now, but his call option exercise price is $2 thousand dollars a share. This essentially reduces his risk quite a bit, adds leverage, and minimizes the time decay of options. In addition, you can look up where most people have purchased stock and their support prices, and he buys a deep in the money call way below those supports. So it's clear that Nancy Pelosi's husband is bullish on the large names in the tech sector for most of 2022. And there are, in my opinion, a couple of reasons to be bullish on tech, as well as a few bear reasons which we should go over. For the bull case, a lot of large tech companies are investing heavily into the metaverse and Web3 in 2022. And if you expect these sectors to grow, it makes sense to invest in tech. Second, the market has had an opportunity to price in interest rate hikes since the announcement earlier in December. So you would expect those to be baked into the prices of tech already. For the bears, they're gonna cite that number one, with inflation rising, if rates go up, money is gonna be more expensive to borrow, which means that growth stocks, specifically tech stocks, won't be able to borrow as cheaply as before. Although it's unclear if that actually affects the larger tech stocks like like Google and Salesforce. And number two, the bears are gonna say that the NASDAQ was carried just by a select few stocks in 2021, and only 30% of the roughly 2,500 stocks in the NASDAQ are above their 200 day moving average. That, if you don't know, is the stock's average closing price over its past 200 trading sessions. That suggests that a lot of tech stocks have lower price momentum, but their performance is being hidden by the strength of just a few stocks like Apple, Microsoft, and Google. Again, this is bad for broad tech, but for the large mega mega cap tech companies, it's not the biggest issue. Let's actually take a deeper look at one of the stocks that's more undervalued on Pelosi's list, which is Micron Technology. If you're following me over on Patreon, my team and I released research reports on 10 stocks that could outperform the S&P 500 in 2022, and one of them was actually Micron and was published before Pelosi's report actually came out. All right, so let me take you in my computer and show you our research right here. So this is Micron Technology, and it's a semiconductor manufacturer headquartered in Boise, Idaho. They're most notable for making semiconductor chips such as DRAM, flash memory, and USB drives. So companies like Nvidia and AMD are currently trading at 80X and 44X forward earnings versus Micron trades at 11X forward earnings. Not only that, if we actually scroll down, we can actually see that their cash generation power and their meaningful free cash flow over time has been rising consistently over time. Their EBITDA margins are also steadily increasing over time. And if we actually scroll down right here, we can see that they're slowly deleveraging their debt and and actually increasing their cash position. Now, if we scroll back up, as we can see from the charts right here, in almost every single category that's listed right here, such as revenue growth, EBITDA growth, and earnings per share, Micron is outperforming the sector median, which means that hopefully the market realizes this over time, and we should see this reflect in their stock price as well. Now, while I do like Micron, does this mean that you should just copy Congress's trades, especially the Pelosi's? Well, not quite. So when it comes to investing, a good investor typically will go through a minimum of three factors to consider when coming up with their investing plan. Number one is risk tolerance. How risky do you wanna be? If you're young and making a great income, you can typically take on a lot more risk, but if you're older and you want income, you probably don't wanna take that much risk on. Number two is time horizon. So how long do you plan on investing for? If it's a short-term trade like the Pelosi's this year, perhaps you can actually copy their trade as well for some upside. If you're a long-term investor, maybe this play isn't for you. Number three is how it fits into your portfolio. So this is another thing that we need to consider. If you're already overweight on tech stocks, say 80% of your portfolio is tech stocks, if copying a congressperson's trades puts you further overweight into that one sector, that might not be the greatest idea. We should also take into account how the market is gonna perform in 2022. So here are some topics I think will be important to follow as we begin the new year. As most of us know, inflation and COVID are both issues that seemingly just won't go away. Now, while this recent Omicron variant isn't the most potent as other variants, it's still going to be important to follow the case count and how that situation develops. With inflation still on the rise, the Fed is definitely going to start beginning their
their tapering and rising interest rates this year. Lastly, American households have added 35.4% more cash to their households since the end of 2019. So while most of this cash is on the sidelines, if we do actually fully reopen back up, then that'll actually spur vigorous spending. So before you go and just copy paste a congressperson's trades, you should be aware of what the market is doing and ensure that it actually fits your risk tolerance, time horizon, and your portfolio as well. We don't know if the S&P will perform plus 30% this year again, or if it's gonna just revert back to its annual average of around 8%. Now, in my opinion, it's better to be realistic and make sure that we're not too overexposed to one sector because preserving wealth, while it's not sexy and a little bit boring, will definitely be a better play in the long term. If you guys watched my video on how to build a rock solid portfolio for 2022, which I'll leave up right here, you'll actually know that diversification is gonna be your best friend. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.